In one of my recent videos, I mentioned an OBS plugin and I feel like I didn't do it justice. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Stroke Glow Shadow plugin. I wanna give you some examples of what you can use it for, but most importantly, I'm gonna show you what it's like to have it installed and all the benefits and options that you have. So here we are in OBS Studio and one of the main things that stands out about this plugin is it gives you three filters, which makes sense, right? Let's say I add a color source, for example, and I put an advanced mask on it. That's a different plugin and we'll make it a circle. Now you're expecting that if I add a filter and it's going to be a shadow, it's just going to be a shadow. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, and that's the case for the stroke and also the glow. Nice, we can make it big, all that, but we'll get into it. But here's the extra thing. I'm going to put that color source under my camera. <laughs> I'm going to go to source and I'm going to see that I also have stroke, glow and shadow as sources. What can I do with that? Let's say that I go with stroke, right? I'm gonna add a stroke and now I can pick that color source, turn off infill zero offset. And now I have a live outline of that. I can bump up the size, play with the threshold a little bit and do all sorts of really cool stuff. Okay, all right, let's get into something visually striking so you can really get it. I'm gonna delete those two. I'm gonna put my camera in a group, call it back, duplicate the camera, select it, control C, control V, put that camera also in a group, and I'm gonna call this keyed. Now on the keyed, I'm gonna go to filters and I'm gonna add background removal. That's yet another plugin. And you won't see any difference right now, except here where you see that oh, it's trying, it's attempting, let's say to remove the background as much as it can. Essentially, what I'm trying to emulate here is someone who uses a green screen for their camera. Well, that's the best result that you can get, but if you don't, that's completely fine. Now, let me add an extra source and that extra source will be stroke, okay? So stroke and um, the source now is going to be keyed. That's the name of the group with the camera, okay? Let's do the same settings as before and now, all right. Not great, but still, you know, animated, still visually kind of striking. Um, I'm actually gonna lower this a little bit, give it a color. Let's go like this, all right, that's nice. But now, since this is on its own completely separate layer, I can add filters to that specific layer that will only affect that layer, including something like a glow. <laughs> Let's add a glow to this. And now the glow is going to be, you know, inside and outside. This intensity, nice color, very nice, which means we can also change the blending mode separately and all that good stuff. Of course, there are some effects that you can also use, like the recursion effect. <laughs> That's another plugin. <laughs> Where is it? Recursion effect. Cool. And if I move, we're getting some weird, but again, visually striking stuff, aren't we? Um, let me turn off the glow. Nice. Okay. Now we can see it sticking around a little bit. What we can do since, you know, our camera is keyed is put that stroke here, uh, behind the camera. And now we're on top of it, no matter what happens. Uh, how about we move it a little bit? Let's offset it. I'm going to scroll over there and over there or over there or, 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 or let's bump up the scale a little bit. There we go. That's really going to push it Bump up the scale there too, or the opposite. All right. Kind of basic effect. Maybe not that impressive. Let's play with it some more. I'm going to offset it so that it brings it kind of towards the middle and kind of up just playing with the settings until I get something again, visually stunning. Look, <laughs> look at that. Let's try to put the glow under the recursion. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is wild. Now, of course, this allows you to get really, really wild. You could uh, make it react to music, um, add extra effects to this. For example, the shader filter plugin, a different plugin again. There is an effect called ripple. So if we want more distortion, for example, right there, <laughs> we can really, really make it unique using streamerbot you can probably trigger it with alerts uh channel point rewards and all sorts of stuff of course this is going to have an effect on your cpu because you know you're doing a real like live action live action real time effects uh so if you're streaming on a crappy computer uh just don't even bother but it's really nice that this is possible let's add a color correction filter 
because I want to map. I'm going to go to desktop audio, go to filters, and I'm going to add an audio move. This is from the move plugin, another plugin. <laughs> I'm immediately going to switch action to setting. Source is uh, stroke two, and the filter is color correction, and the setting is hue shift. Okay, no music playing right now. But if I do play something, I could probably play with the threshold. Let's put that to four. Maybe too much. Two. Keep in mind that I'm using a, you know, a background remover. If you're using a green screen, then this is going to be perfect. You know, everything is going to follow you. Like the key is going to be perfect. Another shader filter plugin, do the RGB. Let's go RGB color wheel. God, this is so cool. Anyway, <laughs> that also means that uh, for simple things like text, uh, shapes, anything can have this stroke glow shadow. For example, a color source, let's make it up. An exciting color. I can go to filters, add an advanced mask from the advanced mask plugin. That's another plugin. Shape is going to be circle and I'm going to place it around here. I can go to filters now and add a shadow. Now, you know, a shadow is going to be behind it. It's going to be dark. It's going to be soft ish. And then you can play with the distance, you know, how distant is going to be from the shape, the angle. So where's the light coming from that's creating this shadow? All right, normal. The intensity, you know, basically the opacity of the whole thing, the color of the shadow. But here's the thing, you have outer shadow, you also have inner shadow. So if you want shadow inside of something, now you can start creating some sort of bevel and emboss effects. You can make things look like they're a button, for example, that a breast button or a depressed button, but you don't have to use shadow as a shadow. It doesn't have to be dark. For example, uh, this could be if I make it big enough and I play around with the distance well enough, this could be a highlight instead of a shadow. All I need is to have this be white-ish. A little bit of blue in there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and let's add another shadow or better yet, let's just duplicate this, set this to black. OK, and then change the angle. Just make it the opposite angle. If light is hitting top left, then bottom right is going to have shadow, right? Make sense? All right, congrats. You made a pretty convincing 3D-ish bevel effect. Add slap another actual shadow to this and you are cooking. We are getting to levels of Photoshop slash OBS Studio that I absolutely enjoy. This is what I live for. Now I know there's a little outline here that is that doesn't seem correct, right? That's that looks wrong. But guess what? We have the power of everything, really. We have the power of every, everything. Let's add a stroke to this and we just need to place it somewhere where it feels right. We need to make it dark. OK, let's make it thick so we can see what we're doing and then let's bump it up. Let's bump it up again. OK, now let's make it small. And look at that it pretty much disappeared. Now, should you be doing this in OBS Studio? No. Is it cool that you can do it in OBS Studio? Yes. Are there some advantages in doing this in OBS Studio? Actually, yes, because you have data. All of this is just data that you can move using the Move plugin, that you can let your chat control using things like StreamerBot, channel point rewards, and uh, change the color of the button, uh, press the button, move the button on screen. Now, if we have separate sources for those outlines, glows, shadows, etc., we can use them as masks. Do you remember? Anyway, um, <laughs> let me add another stroke here. All right, stroke three, whatever. Uh, key is going to be the thingy thing. We're going to do our thingy thing. We're going to make this pretty thick, actually. Let's make it an inner stroke. And already in here, there's something called fill type. And you can set this to a source. And you can set the source to a uh, camera, for example. And as you can see, this is my camera. My camera is using its own outline as a mask directly with the stroke. If you use advanced mask plugin, you can like, you know that we can just make it like a white outline and then use that as a mask. But this gives us the possibility already mostly because it was made by the same person. Finite Singularity, shout out to you. 
you're, you're the goat. But now I can add effects to this. If I want to go and add a shadow to this, now this can have its own shadow and you can create all sorts of wild effects with it. Let me turn this one off. Now this, this is cool, but it may not be your style, right? You want something more subtle. So you can take this, I'm gonna bring it all the way down so it's not visible anymore. And I can just add a shadow that replicates it. The source here is going to be color source three. And would you look at that? And it's its own layer. So I can add um, a bunch of effects. I can do whatever I want with it. Change the color, overlay it on the other one and then add effects so that only the outside is being affected, blah, blah, blah. But you know, very, very simple UI element, just like that. It's right there. You put something in there, it's visible. It's cool. It's neat. It's also very transparent. It can also be animated using the move plugin. Uh, let's, do the, let's say the shadow distance. You can do a little, you can probably do a little animation like that where it's logo animation, any, <laughs> absolutely anything. Okay, cool. Uh, if I modify the original, that's also the beauty of it since it's actually taking the shape from something else. Look at that. It will take it into account. Oh, you don't want, you don't like circles anymore for some reason, boom, rectangle. Oh, you don't like rectangle, boom, rounded rectangle, even more rounded rectangle. If you animate the shape of the first one, then this one follows. This could be like the first animation before the second one gets revealed, maybe. Let's say that you want the blending mode of your blue button here, you know, to affect the background. I can do this and go add, all right? Now it affects whatever's underneath it, but the shadow is not affected because it's on a separate source. That's the beauty of it. Uh, let's say I right click and I go show transition. I go Luma wipe. I go sinus nine. Okay. I click. Okay. Actually, I go back again, show transition, and I make sure it's a large number like 2000 milliseconds. Now, technically, every time this appears, look at that. Now I have something filling this. Now let's say that I'm doing a little animation or something, maybe you know, um, alerts within OBS studio, I can have the outline show up first and then this show up second, looking like it's filling it. All right. Let me switch up the blending mode. Do I still have those filters? Yes. Boom, boom, boom. So it would look something like this. Not bad. <laughs> this could be a little pop-up with your Instagram Add an image source, get your Instagram logo in there, right there. Okay, get you a little text in here, text source. Oh, well, this is nice, but it doesn't pop out as much. On the Instagram, I would definitely add a color correction filter and make it white, but that's just me. What about the brightness? There you go. And then I would add a little shadow. The padding can be automatic. For example, it's probably gonna cut on the right side here. You don't want that. You can put padding auto and you're gonna see it basically adjust to the shadow distance. If I bump it up, you see the padding is getting bigger just to adapt to that, which is cool. I can right click and copy this shadow, uh, select this, go to filters, right click paste, boom. And then I just need to place them again. There we go, adjust them a little bit. If I wanna make an animation, let's say I add a stroke. I choose that group as the source, make sure it's an outline, above the outline a little bit, stay around with the threshold and then place it vaguely around it. Actually, I'm gonna control E and positional alignment, center. Now I, now I have a separate outline that I can, you know, animate, for example. Let's go back to that shader filter plugin, add a ripple, play with distance a little bit. Look at that, very, very subtle animation, not too distracting. If you want to blur it, composite blur, that's another plugin. It's also fine, uh, but it creates like little dark outlines. You can just set the whole thing to blending mode, add. Now it reacts a little bit better. So we are truly, we're truly getting there. When it comes to OBS Studio becoming more and more like Photoshop, <laughs> and I love it, I'm here for it. That's all I want, actually. All right, let me do some shenanigans. Of course, you wouldn't want that effect on all the time because it's very distracting. Pretty cool. Or maybe like a subtle version of it. Could it be nice? Again, if you're using a green screen, then you're you're so good. Like you're so Gucci. You do not have to worry about any of it. Let me actually bump this up a little bit so I can add a shadow. Now back in my game scene, this is what it looks like. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this is dope. This is pretty dope. And this is my real background. Like I can interact with this. Like this is, you know, it's not a green screen. <laughs> oh yeah, you can see my MP3 player here. If you actually use like a music player like that, you can also use like the stroke effect or maybe have this recursion effect happen when uh, you get an alert. So it reacts to the music that's already playing. 
but just for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, I would say. But just this effect here, if you trigger this during alerts or during a raid or something like that, it doesn't distract too much. It shows you that something is going on on top of the alert playing. Yeah, I think you're convinced. I don't think you need me to explain more. <laughs> Only thing I ask for you is to uh, subscribe. That's it. Turn on notifications and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.